Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Halstead, Operations Manager of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. And greetings to you, our distinguished honorees, your families, friends, and fans alike. Welcome to the first and hopefully only virtual ceremony of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. We are so glad that you have decided to join us in this rather unique fashion so that we may celebrate the success of 20 fine individuals who throughout their careers have demonstrated not only the highest level of professionalism, but perfection in their chosen craft. Some of them are no longer with us. Some of them are, and others were even nice enough to send along their own video thanks for your support. On behalf of our board of directors and previous inductees viewing this program today, we welcome you to the 2020 inductee celebration of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. From every point in the universe... <laughs> Instant news coverage, first on KVOX. Now, here's another first edition. KVOX, award-winning Action Central News. Why not start the program with good evening, folks, instead of saying, look at me, I'm fantastic. I want to tell you about Texas Radio and the Big B. Oh, baby, it's so great to be here with you tonight, man. We go through with you right here at the big HTRS, man, from Del Rio Day. Wow! I'm gonna give you the number! Sandy 95. Sandy Lance only music station. Sandy Lance will be the most powerful rock station in North America. Thanks, Rock 80. Amarillo's classic 101.9 Cat Country. Another broadcasting breakthrough on KILT. 508 KILT Wishing Star Time on the Rickshaw Show. Shut down the way. Tell you about Texas Radio and a big beat. 1340 KLMV KGVT KWHI La Nueva Digital This KLIF bulletin from Dallas Three shots reportedly were fired at the motorcade of President Kennedy today near the downtown section Dan Rather reported Well, I'm not a crook It's still climbing The shuttle is still climbing but there is a problem What's happening? Not a word from Mission Control Everybody here is open mouth. What should you do when someone offers you drugs? K-L-I-F present Last night This is Barry K, man I'm on top of everything Charlie Van Dyke on the Mighty 1190 And the Big Switch is coming to Big Cliff Yeah Ted Angelo's official rodeo radio station Dave Mitchell on Saturday night He got it Plays the most George Strait. Hi, this is George Strait. And you're, li- and, you're li- and you're listening to continuous country favorites and fun. More of Austin's best country is coming up. Are, are you sure this microphone works? The Southeast Texas choice for today's best and most country. K. Y. K. R. Beaumont Port Arthur Orange. virtual ceremony today by introducing you to a pair of aces owners from east texas who wrote the book on how to be hands-on operators jc stallings was a true pioneer of creating a big market sound in a small market station stallings operated his station like the rapidly emerging major market giants of the industry featuring tight playlists professionally produced jingles slick production and a constant flow of quality air talent just by showing up you might run into big league consultants like charlie van dyke or bill young and others hired to make you the next big thing dozens of major market air personalities and hundreds of successful jocks from the past 50 years have at least one stint at k triple e on their resume not to mention jc's fm property kjcs Jim Gibbs wasn't even 20 years old when he arrived in Texas, signing on KIVY AM in 1949. Broadcasting from deep within the Davy Crockett National Forest in Crockett, where he would build his media empire, first with an AM, then an FM, eventually a cable TV service, and several print projects to boot. 
acting as owner, chief announcer, news gatherer, promotions manager, play-by-play announcer, and sales manager, Jim really did it all. We've all heard stories about that guy in Texas radio. And you know what? Jim was him. The guy who would visit a client, sell him a spot, return to the station, write the spot, record the spot, play the spot on the radio, collect the money for the spot, and start it all over again. And while that was something to be seen and not heard, many radio enthusiasts recall his famous audible door knocker logo, which was actually an old-timey door chime with one of the tone plates removed. Yes, they were innovators. They were legends. And now they are inductees. Jim Gibbs and J.C. Stallings, the first two members of the Class of 2020 Texas Radio Hall of Fame. You want to talk about a career well lived. Bill Gardner certainly had one. It seemed that everywhere he went, he did quite well. And while Phoenix, Las Vegas, and Los Angeles are full of sun and fun, the Lone Star State shined mighty bright in the eyes of Bill in both Dallas-Fort Worth and San Antonio, too. In 1974, the radio landscape in Dallas-Fort Worth was changing. The mighty 1190 had been sold. FM music was finally being heard in more and more cars, and KBIL was the station people were tuning to. Bill was big, Bill was handsome, Bill was single too, and K-Bill's fun and games department, well, they took advantage of that, and the competition did too. So just after a year or so, he was lured to the McClendon-owned KNUS, where he took the reins of Morning Drive for KNews 99. While they could never duplicate the success of their former sister station, KLIF, awards, accolades, and recognition from plenty of peers came Bill's way. And it wasn't long until broadcasters noticed that Bill had chops as a programmer, too. So on he went to San Antonio and Class FM, where he was their morning guy and vice president of programming. Bill took one more turn on KVIL, this time in afternoon drive in the late 80s, in what would be their final great days as the crown jewel of adult contemporary Texas radio. But Bill would go on to dazzle those who dialed upon him for decades afterward all over the United States of America. For his work in the Lone Star State and those he inspired and entertained here, there, and everywhere today, we honor you, Bill Gardner, a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Hi, I'm Bill Gardner. I want to thank every balloting member of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame for voting me into the class of 2020. It's an honor, and I sure thank you for it. These days, you'll probably find me at our home here in Las Vegas, or maybe at www.billgardneronthradio.com. But back in these days, I was having some wonderful memories in the great state of Texas. I've had the opportunity to work for some of the very best stations between the Red River and the Rio Grande. In 1982, we launched KLLS, Class FM San Antonio, where I was Vice President of Programming and Morning Guy. I worked for the McClendons, K News, KNUS Dallas. In 1974, I was on the original startup team at KVIL Highland Park, Dallas, Fort Worth and reappeared in 1979 and 1989. And a thank you to George Johns for opening the door at both places, San Antonio and Dallas. And thank you to Jack Shell for stuffing the ballot box so I could finally get into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. I think this calls for a celebration. Bill Gardner in the Hall of Fame? How about a Shiner Bach? Here's to some great radio. Did you know that Paul Bean was first cousin to Texas Radio Hall of Famer Bill Young? Neither did we. And this is one of many fascinating things we have learned about this man as people have showed their support for his induction today. KSEL is the radio station where people most likely recall Paul and over the years he has worked with some of the best. Like so many others, he started in the biz as a teen, and he hit the cities big and small in what turned out to be a decades-long career. Greenville, Sulphur Springs, Houston, and eventually Lubbock. 
Paul Bean was an Elkins Institute alumni, a chief engineer, an owner-operator, a news director, a play-by-play announcer, and a Texas TV anchor, too. Other accolades of note would be the 1997 worst-to-first ratings turnaround for classic rocker KLZK, the second-fastest in Arbitron history. And do you want to know who was first? Scott Shannon Z100 in New York. Paul caught lightning in a bottle again with his Texas country station, The Rebel, which was awarded Radio Station of the Year. KFYO was the last station to give Paul a home with his commentary, The Way I See It. The way we see it is this honor is long overdue, but you know what? It is just as much a privilege for us to award this as we hope it is for him to accept it. Paul Bean is a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. First of all, I guess thanks to everybody who voted for me. This is an incredible honor that I thought would never come. But it's here and I appreciate the vote of each and every person. I guess I need to send out a special thanks to some people who lobbied very hard for me to be inducted into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Guys like Mike Wade and Glenn Ivey Uh, Robert Snyder at KFYO in Lubbock, Dave Walker, all of those guys work so very hard. In my radio career, I've been fortunate enough to work for three Radio Hall of Fame broadcasters, and they were all wonderful, and a fourth who one of these days I hope finds his way into the Hall of Fame. They're all gone now, but they were a great teacher for me in broadcasting. They were, of course, Gordon McClendon at KILT in Houston, Bill Bradford, Brad at KSST in Sulphur Springs, and the legendary Clint Farmby, who not only is a member of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, but a former member of the National Association of Broadcasters. He served as president. I guess also I need to thank the real force behind me being in this Hall of Fame. That's my family my wife, Frances, uh, my daughters, Beth and Paula, because there was a lot of missed dinners and school events because a tornado or an armed robbery or a fire or a car wreck always seemed to happen at exactly the wrong time. And I appreciate their patience for many, many years that allowed me to be a broadcaster, especially a newsman. Also, I'd like to send out a special thanks to my daughter, Paula, who helped put this presentation together, and her husband, Craig, because I have an early cell phone model. I think mine still runs on Steam, but I would like to thank them for making this presentation possible. Again, thank you very much for this honor. It's a great honor. I feel like sometimes it's not deserved but I'm not giving it back. Thank you very much. Mike Cannon just might have been one of the youngest radio DJs in Houston radio history. More on that in just a minute. He was bit by the bug at an early age, dabbling in shortwave and the Citizens Band and even a mobile radio station, complete with an antenna mounted on the back of his bike. Armed with that knowledge, we can all assume what a hit he was with the ladies. In 1972, Mike was an avid fan of country KNER, which was taking on ratings leader KIKK AM. But the country radio landscape was about to change. Keener had more power, and they were about to go 24 hours, and Mike was intrigued at the on-air appeal for new DJs. He sent them a couple of tapes in his work, and he was hired almost immediately. 
and over the next 11 years went from the lowest man on the totem pole to the production director for 1070 AM. He tried his hand in programming at KIKR in the North Houston suburb of Conroe and was the production director of KPRC in Houston before he found his home with the Houston Astros. He was their affiliates relations manager for 17 years. Afterward, he opened up his own production shop and he never gave much thought to working on the air again. But when we say Mike had a higher calling, <laughs> we mean it. Mike was offered a job at the nation's premier contemporary Christian radio station, KSBJ, and he took it. Mike says the opportunity to use the talent God gave me for him is the icing on the cake of my radio journey. And since I started my career as one of the youngest DJs on the air in Houston, I might as well end it as one of the oldest. But let's hope it doesn't end anytime soon. For Mike Cannon, a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. It's hard to imagine that a guy who made his living with words for 48 years can't think of the right ones to convey his appreciation for the high honor of being inducted into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. All I can say is thank you. I'm humbled and grateful. Those words aren't strong enough, but they're all I got. I've been so blessed to have had great people around me all these years. A family who put up with the turning the radio down when the music played and up when the DJ talked. The late Rick Libby, who hired me, even though I had zero radio experience. The superstars of the day that took the kid under their wings and taught me about radio and in many ways about life. Hall of Famers. The late Buffalo Bill Bailey. The late Dr. Bruce Nelson Stratton the late Hal McLean, who I'm honored to share this induction with today. Good grief. I've killed them all. Dan Gallo, Don Armstrong, Buddy Cantu, Chuck Joseph, Bill Ingram, Ty McFarlane, and Troy West at KSBJ, my good friend John Frost, who taught this old dog some new tricks. So many others. Suffice it to say that if we've ever worked together, I count you as a friend, and you taught me something. Something I wanted to take with me, or something I didn't. But you brought value to my life and career, and I'm much better because of you. And all those guys I didn't work with, but listened to, admired and learned from. Barry the Boogeyman K. Roger Garrett, who made WWW a thing before the internet. Johnny Goen, Bill Young, C.C. McCartney, Archie Yancey, Paul Berlin, Fred Olson, and Randy Hames as Hudson and Harrigan, and so many more. And Buddy McGregor, the guy who inspired me to get into radio. Interesting story about Buddy. I was doing 7 to Midnight on Keener when Buddy retired from Houston Radio. He was doing 7 to Midnight at KQ and was having a going-away show. I called, he put me on the air on KQUE, and I put him on the air on Keener, and was able to thank him for his influence and wish him well in his retirement. 20 years later, I'm managing the Astros radio network and soliciting stations to carry the games. I call a station in Mineral Wells, Texas, asked to speak to the general manager. Guy picks up the phone and says, Buddy McGregor? I said, are you the Buddy McGregor that worked in Houston? He said yes, and I reminded him of our conversation and told him how I used to listen to him on K-News when I was a kid. He laughed and said, what a coincidence, Mike, after I retired, I used to listen to you on Keener. I said, are you serious? He said, no, but wouldn't that have made a great story? And it did. Thank you all again. May God bless you all real good. Cheers. Fred Peavy was born in rural Indiana. How in the world did he wind up in Texas? It was his talent. 
At just 17, he was on the air in Linton, Indiana, and then worked at the Purdue University radio station while he was attending school there. From there, it was on to Louisville, Kentucky, and then Macomb, Illinois, where he was already a general manager. Until that call came in. It was from Texas Radio Hall of Famer Don Peterson, and he had a simple question. Would you like to stay general manager in Illinois for $40,000 a year or come sell for me in Houston and make a hundred grand a year? Well, I think we know where this is all going. Don and Fred embarked on a number of adventures together, both at K-Lite and at U106.9. And while at K-Lite, Fred created a computer program that combined data from the Media Audit and Arbitron. And when CBS took over KLTR, they promoted Fred to sales manager because he knew where the money was and how to convince clients how to spend it. In 1992, Fred moved to KLDE and he stayed with the Cox Media Group for the next 25 years. He was even named Employee of the Year in 2015. He was always the first to turn on the lights and he was the last to leave the building and turn them back off again. Always willing to help anyone at any time and he also mentored many sales representatives along the way. Outside of his work, he was a loving and dedicated husband, father and grandfather with family being his truest passion. From announcing his son's baseball games or attending his grandchildren's various sporting events and school functions, those were the times that Fred Peavy was his happiest. He passed away on June the 1st, 2017, but his family and his friends and his colleagues are viewing this virtual ceremony today to celebrate his work and his contributions to broadcasting and superb salesmanship. Fred Peavy is a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Gil Garcia is one of the more well-rounded inductees this year, and no, we're not speaking of his waistline. Getting his start in Corpus Christi in the 1960s, he put the wattage in every beachside cottage on KZFM, KRYS, and KTOD. But Gil was rather unique because he knew every aspect of the console from the inside and the outside. And he made use of his time in Corpus Christi to study it all from the tip of the microphone to the top of the transmission tower and everything else an up-and-coming engineer ever needed to know. So when Lady Bird Johnson was looking for a new engineer in Austin, she called up Gil to get the job done. He's lived and worked around that region ever since, and it served him well. From KLBJ and KTBC, Gil gravitated back to the sexier side of the mic as the night jock on KNOW. Then, it was on to electrifying adventures at Austin's Key 103 and Z102. And somewhere in between, he became the owner of nearby Kerrville's KERV. But his defining career moment had to be when Clear Channel had an opening as an engineer in Austin. He must have liked them, and they must have really liked him, for he stayed with the company and what would eventually evolve into iHeartRadio for an astounding 35 years serving as the regional chief engineer and eventually overseeing operations in Nevada, Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Colorado, Arizona, and Kansas. Oh, and in his spare time, he was also their disaster coordinator for the whole company. That's a whole lot of work, and that's a lot of radio stations, all of which are processed perfectly and still operating at the maximum legal effective radiated power. Compliments of Gil Garcia, a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Hello everyone. I hope you and your families are doing well and are safe. I was shocked to find out that I was inducted into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. It's a great honor to be with fellow broadcasters in this hall. Through my years I've enjoyed the wonderful listeners and people in the broadcasting field. A radio station has so many incredible people working and loving it. So if I win any awards it is also due to those of you in these jobs that helped me become a better person in what I do 
and helping others in what they do. The first time I got in front of a microphone, I commented to myself, they're actually paying me to do this for something I love. I would have done it for nothing. I like to thank everyone individually by name, but that would take too long, and I might hurt someone's feelings by forgetting them. So you know who you are. And thank you, my friends, from the bottom of my heart. I'm truly blessed by God and by you. I do want to thank my wonderful wife, Mary Ann. I love you, honey, and thank you for standing by me all these years. I think our spouses and families should be getting awards for those times that some of us had to work odd hours to keep a station on the air. Thanks to my two wonderful sons, Mark and John, and my daughter-in-laws, who are always ready to give their mom and dad a helping hand. And then there's my blessed daughter, Emily K. Garcia. Bless her heart and spirit, who at the end of my career gave me a new inspiration for those coming up in radio. Unfortunately, she passed away three years ago at the age of 30. She too had the radio bug as I do, and for a short time was on the air every morning with Bob Cole and the gang at KOKFM in Austin. She loved every minute of being with them, and like me, the excitement of a radio show. I know she'd be smiling at me now and is proud of her dad. I know my dad would be proud of me, along with my mother, my sisters, my relatives, and my in-laws. For me, it's been an incredible journey of memories in the life of radio with all the wonderful people I met along the way. God gives you the gift of life. What you do with it is up to you. Thanks again, everyone, for this great honor of being inducted in the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Bye. Rick Upton's name is synonymous with radio in San Antonio. But did you know he didn't arrive there until 1984? But when he did, he left more than one mark, and a few of his competitors are still smarting from them today. It was KITY that enticed him to the Lone Star State, and when he transitioned from production director to program director, he switched the format to the fabled Power 93, and in no time, the radio station was number one in the Alamo City. There was a short stint in St. Louis, but it wasn't any time at all that Rick was back in town to take his old state down and did just that at the helm of KTFM. It's important to note that KTFM had the highest cum in San Antonio radio history under his leadership with 330,000 unique monthly listeners. By this time, Rick was getting a reputation as a turnaround guy. And when KONO made the move to FM, it was Rick who took it to number one. Then it was on to Spanish Broadcasting's 94.1 La Ley and Norteño 760, where he got his first taste as a general manager. Big hit records, big promotions, and big personalities. That's what you strive for when you want your radio station to win and win big. And while many try, you achieve it. But Rick had it honed down to a fine point again and again and again. Today we honor the incredible career of ace programmer and personality Rick Upton, a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Thank you, whomever. Too many people to thank. Um, I have to start with Lee Woods. Carolyn Bacon, Joe Miller, my oldest Dara's friends in Texas, San Antonio, Sonny Rio, Hector Reyes, Bobby Prado, Bill Hill, my friend, over on the east coast of Texas now, um, Jack Roth, John Barger, just to name a few, my friends at Spanish Radio. Um, I hope I didn't leave anybody out, but thank you. This is truly an amazing honor. Uh, to have bestowed, and I'd like to thank all the people uh, that supported me along the way. My uh, partner in crime, the late Rick the Stick Morellis, he deserves to be in this um, Hall of Fame uh, as much as anybody does. So once again, uh, I told you I'd keep it short. Well, you told me to keep it short, and I did. Um, thank you very much. 
Much appreciated. I'm going to go put my pants on now. Bye-bye. Lots of personalities like to throw around the fact that they are an institution. Well, just because you may have made a living in the same city for a lot of years, a legend does not that you make. But it most certainly does when we're talking Ralph Cooper. Ralph's good work has been heard in Houston for years, first on KYOK, then on KCOH. It's been read in the Houston Defender and seen for years on KTRK Channel 13. But make no mistake, Ralph Cooper's sports rap on KCOH is the last word on sports in Houston. Not only did the town know it, the athletes did too. Ralph is on a first-name basis with most every influential Houston Astro, Rocket, Texan, and Oiler. Satchel Paige, Roberto Clemente, and Muhammad Ali all called him friend, and if I can directly quote the great Houston Post. You don't have to know the difference between a pigskin and a softball to enjoy Ralph Cooper's sports rap. Listening to Cooper's avenacular tone and delivery matched with a quick wit, you'll soak up some real Houston history. You know, it's often said that there is no personality bigger than the radio station they work for. And in most cases, that's true. But even when the KCOH call letters and its legendary 1430 signal separated, fan demand insisted that Ralph and his friends' voices be heard and that sports rap had a place on the radio. He and it still do. And with the mighty KCOH call letters still behind him on the radio and online too. Ralph is a huge supporter of local high school and college athletes and an inspiration to young broadcasters throughout the area and around the nation. He's a mentor, he's a leader, and today officially a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Hello, this is Ralph Cooper. I want to thank the Texas Radio Hall of Fame 2020 uh, for making me an inductee into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame in 2020. I want to thank all of the people who voted for me. I'm Ralph Cooper, KCOH Radio, Houston, Texas. I want to thank all of the people who voted for me, all of you who didn't vote for me. I just want to thank the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Uh, for my induction into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame 2020. I want to thank my family for their support. I want to thank all of my co-workers and the uh, fellow Hall of Famers that I work with, Michael Harris and Don Sams, the late Skipper Lee Frazier, uh, Wash Allen. I want to thank all of them. I want to thank uh, Tom Franklin, uh, also of the uh, Texas Radio Hall of Fame, and uh, Barry Warner and a number of others. And also I want to thank a couple of people who are no longer with uh, us, uh, Cloyd Rick Roberts, who was the program director at radio station KYOK when I started in 1969. And also I want to thank Mike Patrizzo, who gave me a shot at KCOH Radio in 1984. And I want to thank God at this time again. I want to thank all of you uh, for the induction into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. And I want to wish the best for all of those who are going into this 2020 class with me. And in, in, in ending, I want to thank God for giving me his support, the support of God in my uh, ventures in radio broadcasting over the years. I'm Ralph Cooper. Thank you. The road that Neil Talmadge took to radio was a rough one. Why? because it started in newspaper ad sales. But after just two years pounding the pavement, the sexy allure of radio lured him to 97 Rock, where in just a year or so, he was runner-up for account executive of the year from the AWRT. KKBQ Zoo hired him away, but he didn't stay, instead making the move later that year to KTRH, and it's safe to say it was there where he found his calling. And when you can combine what you love with what you do, happiness is almost guaranteed. Neil was so good at selling Houston Rockets pre-game and post-game ads, the Rockets made him their director of broadcasting. When the Houston Arrows hockey team wanted to really ramp things up, they hired Neil. All this time, Neil was honing his craft of marketing partnerships, naming rights, and broader visions for brands and businesses. And if you ever wondered... 
just who was the point person when the summit became the compact center. That was Neil Talmadge. And it was the same thing with the galleryfurniture.com bowl too. When the NFL franchise we know and love called the Houston Texans showed up in Space City, it was CBS Radio that secured the rights to broadcast the games, develop a network, and hopefully make a little something off their 10-year, 70-plus million dollar deal. Neil was the answer. From there, he took a break from radio, but not from broadcasting, to work with ISB Sports and the University of Houston as their general manager. He would then be the GM of All Sports 1560, the game in Houston, and even be a part of the launch of the first All News FM in Houston, News 92.1, where he would win the Radio 1 President's Club Award. If you ever meet him, you're gonna love him. He's the perfect balance of humor and humility and a heavy-handed scoop of happiness to boot. Join me as we congratulate him today, Neil Talmadge, a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Howdy. I've been thinking about what I want to say for this video. And I figure I might as well just start from the beginning. Many, many years ago, I helped start a singing telegram service in Houston. And although I sang to several celebrities like John Travolta, Rock Hudson, Marie Osmond, the one telegram that I'll always remember was delivered to a secretary in the sales department of the old Houston Post newspaper. Afterward, as I was leaving the building, the sales manager ran out in the parking lot and caught me and said, son, I need someone with your kind of enthusiasm. You would make a great sales rep. And he gave me his business card and told me to call him when I was ready, which I did a few weeks later. And the rest, as they say, is history. And I feel very blessed to have made it all the way from there to here. And I'd like to thank a few people who had faith in me along the way. Steve Patterson, Laura Morris, Bob McKay, I'd also like to thank Nick Peterson, who nominated me for this award. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't also thank Rowdy, Josh, and the members and previous inductees into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, especially those of you who voted for me. But seriously, thank you all. I am truly humbled by this honor. God bless. Zach Owen doesn't know this, but he is a hero to so many Texas radio program directors and personalities, including yours truly. Growing up in Fort Worth, he was bitten by the radio bug after meeting KFJZ's Marky Baby, and as soon as he could, it was off to nearby Cleburne and KCLE, a place where many a Hall of Famer got their start. After a few years, he hit the road for the bright lights of Brownwood, but was lured back by KCLE owner Earl Fletcher to run the whole shooting match at 11.20 a.m., and it was nice to be closer to home. After a few years, the Fletchers were enjoying wild success in Waco at their FM station KJNE, and Zach moved farther away but further up the ladder. Then there was a friendly trade arranged by the Fletchers and former co-workers Dick Osborne and Rusty Reynolds. It was then that Zach wrote the book on how to drum up double-digit ratings at Keene and Abilene and then at Kicks and Longview. Now there was that one year he wound up in Birmingham, Alabama, but back home to Texas it was in 1992 and Waco 100 has been the number one station in Central Texas ever since. 
Zach is a survivor, and he still loves what he does, and he's still at Waco 100 as their morning man, program director, and the iHeart Senior Vice President of Programming for the Central Texas region. As this virtual ceremony plays before him and his friends and family, I imagine it's with a good cigar in one hand and a glass of scotch on the rocks in the other, as it should be for my friend Zach Owen, a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Hey, thank you so very much to Josh and the crew at the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. It's truly an honor and a privilege to be inducted uh, this year. Also, congratulations to the fellow inductees. Uh, good job. Hey, I want to say thanks to my mom and dad. I wish they were still alive. My mom actually would drive me out to the west side of Fort Worth to KTVT Channel 11 TV, and I'd watch a young Marky Baby, Mark Stevens, do his thing, and I wanted to be just like him. 43 years in the business. It's kind of crazy to think it's been that long, and people say, do you love your job? Man, I love my job. Every morning, getting up early and getting in. Thanks to my partner, Jim Cody, Almost 28 years together at Waco 100. I appreciate you so very much. You, you mean so much to me. Uh, my kids, Brandon, my daughter Stevie, my grandkids, thank you for your support over the years. I want to point out some people that got me started in the business. Thank you to the late, great Earl Fletcher and John Fletcher. You have uh, truly mean so much to me. Lou Murray, my general manager out in Abilene many years ago. He taught me so much. Rusty Reynolds and Dick Osborne. Thank you to those two great men uh, for what they did for my career and moving along. Once again, thank you. True honor. I appreciate it. Thank you. Pam Kehoe graduated from SFA in 1985 with a bachelor's degree in business administration. One wonders if she even knew it would be show business. With a diploma in hand, she headed home to Houston, and there she joined Juggernaut 50,000-watt KTRH as their director of marketing and promotions, a job she had for 14 years. When Cox Radio decided to play in the top 10 markets, they saw what Pam had to offer and lured her away. But after just one year, the band got back together. CBS Radio in Houston had made some management changes at the top, and that provided for a KTRH-type reunion. Laura Morris, Bill Van Rysdam, Clint Wright, and others, including fellow inductee Neil Talmadge, all took positions within that cluster that at the time had two FMs, two AMs, and the newly formed Houston Texans Radio Network. She brought her experience to print media, where she led marketing and online efforts for the Houston Chronicle and the Green Sheet, and since 2018, Pam Kehoe has been a part of the University of Houston's Athletic Department as Associate Athletic Director for Marketing and Fan Engagement. We'd like to also point out that we are aware of at least 19 prestigious awards that Pam has received in her career from groups like the AWRT, the TAB, the CRB, and the Houston Air Awards, to name a few. As she views this virtual ceremony today surrounded by friends, family, and a ton of colleagues, we all agree this accolade is richly deserved. Kindly join me in congratulating my friend Pam Kehoe, a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. I can adequately express what being inducted into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame means to me. My radio career is a major part of my heart and soul. I love the platform that it gave me to help make a difference in people's lives. From the ability to be on a team that raised over $4 million for the kids at St. Jude, to working on community events like the Freedom Over Texas, to giving away countless tickets and prizes that just made people's days better. I have radio to thank for my many of my closest and most cherished friends. I wasn't in a sorority in college, but I certainly found my tribe when I got to radio. I was fortunate to work with so many talented people. Thanks to Jay Jones, who created the work environment that originally got me hooked in this industry, and who, when I considered throwing in the towel, came down to my office to make sure that I didn't. 
I spent over 25 years working with some of the most talented DJs and news people in the industry, and some of the best program directors as well, including Jeff Garrison, John Trepain, and Darren Davis. I also worked for some of the best GMs, including Laura Morris, Brian Purdy, and Chris McMurray. The other part of radio that I loved was being able to help develop my staff and hopefully contribute to their future success. I have to thank a couple of my cohorts in crime, Clint Wright, Allison Newman, and Lauren Wilson. Without them, it wouldn't have been near as much fun and I wouldn't have accomplished as much. Thanks to Tim Johnson, a super creative radio professional who has always been available to be a soundboard and supported me to get into the hall. I couldn't have done any of this without the support of my family. My mother and father, who were supportive of everything I did, even if they did wonder at times when I was going to go get that real job. My brother, Stephen, who has always been supportive of everything I've done. And my son, Patrick, who spent much of his childhood running the halls of the radio stations and at live broadcast. He got some priceless lessons along the way for sure, including how to sell from Neil Talmadge. The final person I'd like to thank is Steve Westbrook from SFA, who taught me so much that prepared me for my radio career and took me into my first radio studio. Josh and Chad, thanks so much for everything you do for the hall and the fabulous presentation. I honestly couldn't be more honored to be inducted into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. A big congratulations to all the talented radio broadcasters being inducted today and one of our favorite radio reps for the class of 2020. Thank you. Long before Keene was in Abilene, the KEAN call letters were located in Brownwood, and they belonged to the radio station where Carrie Alford got his start. That was in 1966. Somewhere along the way, like many DJs of the day, he changed his name to Jimmy Stewart, and the state of Texas would fall in love with him and his voice. In 1971, he made the trek to Cowtown's KXOL, where he worked as a news reporter, but for just a little while, they asked him to leave, and it probably was the best thing that could have ever happened to his career. Jimmy left West 7th Street for 50,000 watts of fun on broadcast hill at WBAP, and with the exception of a brief pit stop across the hall at sister station KSCS, Jimmy Stewart would be a mainstay at 8.20 a.m. through the duration of WBAP's days as a full-service country radio station and continue to make contributions to their news talk format for years after that. While he wasn't playing the tunes any longer, his voice was still heard as a part of the award-winning ratings juggernaut Sports at Six with Randy Galloway. It's important to note that Randy was a pro sports writer first, but it was Jimmy that helped sculpt Randy into the most notable sports personality in the DFW radio market. Jimmy was voted best voice in morning radio by the readers of D Magazine, and believe me, once you heard it, you never forgot it. Earlier this year, we said goodbye to Jimmy for good, but he leaves behind his wife Nancy, their children, grandchildren, lots of family and friends, and over the years, hundreds of thousands of fans. Jimmy Stewart is a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. And on behalf of him and me, it's Miller Town. For years, Texas Radio Hall of Fame board member Mike Shannon lobbied for an award for journeyman broadcaster. And while that never happened, there is one inductee this year who should have bought stock in U-Haul, and it's Bill Legrand. Bill has not only seen it all, he's done it all. On the air, sales, engineering, even general manager, and in some very memorable markets like Dallas-Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio, Bay City, Austin, and even wonderful Waco. 59 years in the business and just a few months ago called his career good. Along the way, he was a board member of the TAB, 
He founded ROSA, the radio organization of San Antonio, and became the darling of groups like Clear Channel, Paxson, Capstar, and especially Westinghouse by being an early adapter to computer technology and showing radio groups how computer analytics were a powerful tool for sellers company-wide. It's important to note that even though we chose to go with a single narrator for our event this year, there were quite a few personalities and people of note in the biz that were waiting in line to say good things on his behalf. Luckily, he's here to say them for himself, Bill Legrand, a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Thank you very much and good evening. A while back, I started branding myself as the old radio guy for obvious reasons, and I'm here tonight, got my old radio guy tie on, my favorite old radio, this 1930s era Zenith, and I have two things in common. First of all, we're both really old, and second of all, we pretty much still work in radio. When I first heard about this induction, I looked at the list of previous inductees, and it was a bit intimidating to say the least. I told my wife that I'm not sure I belong in the same room with these folks, and sure enough, here it is, induction night, and I'm not in the same room with them. These are legends in the business, people that I've known about, respected, listened to, admired. Some of them I've worked with. I've hired a couple of them along the way, been hired by a couple of more, and on occasion was even fired by a couple of them. It wasn't personal. It's just the nature of the business. Because when you're making your number, everything's okay. And when you're not making your number, nothing you do is okay. So the best thing to do, I was told, was just keep your head down and sell spots. And I've sold a bunch of them. I'd like to thank everyone who voted for me. I'd like to thank my daughter, Becky, in particular, who nominated me and then worked really hard to make this happen for me. My family, my wife, Vi, of 53 years, who stuck with me through a lot of ups and downs and packing and unpacking. My new wife and life partner, Marty, whose love and support have made it possible for me to continue to work in this great business for the past few years. Both my great kids, Bill and Becky, and all of the friends and mentors and co-workers that I've met and worked with along the way. And finally, I'd like to thank God and the great state of Texas. God for giving me this mixed blessing of this horrible disease that started eroding my vision when I was just a teenage kid and the great state of Texas for recognizing the problem and stepping up and providing me with the training and education that opened the door of opportunity to this wonderful business I call radio. And finally, I'd like to thank heavens that I don't have to be at the mercy of Arbitron any longer. In the words of Ben Johnson at the 1973 Oscars acceptance speech, well, thank you very much, couldn't happen to a nicer feller. Chris Arnold has been a radio and television favorite in the DFW area for more than 40 years. After he graduated from the University of Oklahoma in 1980, he was hired at KKDA-FM, that's K104, as sports director. He was heard every morning with fly jock Tom Joyner and a part of the Skip Murphy and Company morning show. Chris worked at KKDA for 30 years. How in the world he had time to moonlight is anybody's guess, but Chris also hosted his very own highly rated talk show from 1995 to 1999 on Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. He was the first show on The Ticket to reach number one in the ratings. Since 1996, Chris has been an integral part of the NBA's world champion Dallas Mavericks broadcast team. First as courtside analyst and then serving as the Mavs game night MC. Chris was also selected to MC the 2010 NBA All-Star Game in AT&T Stadium in front of a crowd of 108,000 people. That's the largest crowd to view a basketball game in the United States ever. Today, Chris remains a fixture on the Intercom-owned KRLD-FM. That's 105.3 The Fan and is one of their most popular hosts. He's covered every major sporting event the world has to offer. 28 Super Bowls, 21 NBA Finals, 2 Olympics, 15 Final Fours, 8 World Series, 26 Championship Boxing Title Fights, 25 NBA All-Star Games, 8 Baseball All-Star Games, 5 Pro Bowls, 15 College Football Games, and even the World Cup. 
On a personal note, we feel obligated, Chris, to let you know there is no bigger supporter of yours than KKDA's Hyman Childs, who has wanted this day to come even more than you for quite some time. Chris Arnold is a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. This is amazing. I'm so proud and honored to be a part of the class of 2020, the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. I never could have imagined it. I want to thank everyone who voted me in, all of my peers. I can't thank you enough. It's quite a surprise. I've been in radio for 47 years. I started in Memphis, Tennessee at the age of 14 at WLOK Radio. I've been in radio for 47 consecutive years. I have never not been on the radio. That's most of my life. I started in Dallas at K104 Radio. I got to thank Hyman Childs, the owner, and the late, great Chuck Smith, the operations manager and general manager. They allowed me to have an interesting life. They let me cover the world of sports, and I mean the entire world. I covered Super Bowls, NBA Finals, NBA All-Star Games, Final Fours, World Series, Baseball All-Star Games, the Pro Bowl. I covered Stanley Cup Finals, uh, the Olympics, the World Cup, championship boxing matches, college football, Cowboys, Mavericks, Rangers, Stars, you name it. I covered it all thanks to them. So I've been in Dallas for four decades, and I've had the pleasure to work at three different radio stations and been a part of four shows that went to number one in a major market that's almost unheard of, starting with the Tom Jonas Show. Tom, I can't thank you enough. Then there was Skip Murphy and Company. Skip Murphy, Nana Lee, Sam Putney, and The Wig. You guys are my crew. We made history. At the ticket, Mike Reiner, thank you for hiring me. And Corby Davidson, you're my boy. We made the Chris Arnold Show number one for five consecutive years. Then at 105 Through the Fan, where I've been and I still am. Gavin Spittle, thank you for everything. We took the G Bag Nation to number one. That's Gavin Dawson, Lucius Alexander, Jeff Cavanaugh, Mike Bassick. Thank y'all very, very much. I got to thank my family, my wife Pamela, my three kids, Sanai, Cameron, and Alex. Of course, my mom and dad, my sisters, both sides of the family, all of my friends for putting up with me. And again, I can't say this enough. I have to thank the listeners. If it weren't for the listeners, I would not have had a job. I am here because of them. I appreciate them. And as I would say at the end of my show, there's no me without you. That being said, this is the epitome. The Texas Radio Hall of Fame. There's nothing left to do but drop the mic and say, ooh-wee, got you down. Blanquita Walsh had her heart set on a fine arts degree from the University of Texas. But there was a life hurdle that got in the way. Her father died unexpectedly, so it was back home to San Antonio where she got a job as a studio artist at TV station KLRN. A copywriting job opened up at K-Buck Radio, and with that move came a name change to BQ. The owner of the radio station thought Blanquita was a $25 handle, certainly not a name you'd ever see on a belt buckle. So just when she was getting used to BQ, opportunity knocked again, and it was K-I-T-E that offered her a huge opportunity, but it came with another name change. But half the billing on the Tom and Tony show was something she'd have to settle with. Blanquita soloed her very own morning show on KSJL and made some memorable radio with Hall of Famer Bruce Hathaway on 55 KTSA. She even came full circle with Bruce on the No Bull Network just a few years ago. From Texas, she traveled to our nation's capital where Blanquita worked for three presidents. She had a syndicated program on Radio America Network and appeared on television shows on CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, and the BBC. BQ is the annual host of the Memorial Day Parade in Washington, D.C. Her work has garnered multiple commendations and awards, including being named one of the top 25 talk hosts in the country by USA Today. But she never cut her ties with Texas and now co-host a weekend online program called Lone Star Saturday with renowned San Antonio broadcasting legend Gary DeLon and her daily radio show, The Hard Question, can now be heard on WCGO on the Smart Talk Network. There's only one named award in the history of this organization 
and each year it is given to the most exceptionally qualified candidate submitted. Admittedly, that's a pretty crowded field. But this year's Sammy Award goes to Blanquita Cullum, a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. I am thrilled to be inducted into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Thank you so much and to receive the prestigious Sammy Award for trailblazing for women in the industry. Well, hey, it only took me 40 plus years to get there and you can't quite see the machete behind my back right now because the trailblazing continues. I want to send a great big hug and lots of love to Lee Woods, Sunny Rio, Hector Reyes, and of course to you, Josh Holstead, for what you've done all these years for honoring our colleagues in the industry. You're making a difference, you've made a difference, and good luck on your new journey. Now, meanwhile, I want to thank my daughter, Blanquita Salva, my son-in-law, Mike, my granddaughters, Eloise Ivanovli, and my wonderful son, who's also in the business. He's a journalist and his beautiful son, Henry James Cullum. To all of you, much, much love. But remember this. Oh, and by the way, you're seeing the guy behind my shoulder here, George. Well, we're on a mission here. I can't quite tell you what it is. It's quite undercover. But I am encouraging all your big, beautiful Texas voices, whether you're in news or music or whatever it is, rock and roll. Remember, the freedom of speech depends upon the guidance from the Lone Star State. So with that, I send you my heartfelt thanks and know I appreciate it more than you'll ever imagine. And uh, say goodnight, George. There are plenty of radio personalities that are pilots, but a world-renowned, award-winning stunt pilot? There can only be one, and that was Hal McClain. His love for radio began as a teen as a ham operator in Shepherd, Texas. And even though life brought him to other locales like California and New Mexico, radio never left him. Like so many others, it was small towns like Cleveland and Conroe and Jasper where he cut his teeth. But once you heard how you knew, he was eventually big city bound. First on Houston's KULF and its subsequent format, Demand Radio KTHT, and afterward at Houston's KENR, the radio station that was giving old guard Kick AM 650 a run for its money as the country channel of choice in Space City. Sadly, Hal's life ended early after an accident at an air show in Kerrville. He was only 41 years old but in his short time created an unforgettable persona, both on the air and in the air, and not a single person would ever doubt Hal passed away doing exactly what he loved. Congratulations to the late Hal McLean, a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Bama Brown has been an Austin mainstay for more than three decades. And for some of us that heard his earliest work on KPEZ's Weekend Graveyard Shift, well, we had our doubts. But you know who did have an ear for talent, even in its rawest form? Z102 General Manager and Texas Radio Hall of Famer Stan Webb, who took his magnificent seven MacLinden training and put Bama Brown on a course to become a crowned audio jewel of the state capitol. Rising to mornings at Z102 and then finding formats that were a bit more befitting to himself and his personality at Case 101 and 981 KVET, where he still hosts the leading country morning show in the market today. And while some may argue now more than ever, Bama has a face for radio, national TV stardom came his way on the wildly popular Motor Trend Network show, Iron Resurrection, where Bama can now showcase another passion, classic cars, and rusty parts. One trick from Bama's playbook, if you haven't figured it out, is to be your best, you've got to work with the best looking people, and that served him well too. It really has been a joy to get to know this man since the good news came his way, and I hope that you get the time to know and love him the way his family and his community do as well. 
Alabama Brown of Dripping Springs, Texas, is a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Hi, I'm Bama Brown from Austin, Texas, KVET uh, FM, also Case 101 uh, FM and KVET FM before that, and then Z102 before that. I just want to thank the people that nominated me for this award. I'm I'm humbled and shocked, actually. Um, I understand it came from some of my competitors, so that you can't have a bigger compliment than that. Uh, to be in an organization in a club uh, with Walter Cronkite and Dan Rather and, and Wolfman Jack, you know, all, all heroes of mine. I am just I'm honored and I just want to thank everybody that I've worked with because uh, an award like this is a team effort and you know, you would not get this with all the great partners I've had and the managers and program directors, all just wonderful folks that helped me in my career. And I really want to thank my wife, Jamie, and my daughter, Alex, who were there for me when, you know, I had to go off and raise money for charities or work a night shift or whatever. And, and they uh, supported me in this. And uh, it's just a real honor to, to be inducted into the, the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Steve-O the Knight Rider began his career in radio in 1958, and it lasted until he stepped away in 1980. It was a life choice that took a drastic turn, but it was a turn for the better. Steve-O became ordained into the Christian ministry and has been a pastor since 1984, but oh, what a run in radio he had. From 1959 to 1967, he had the number one nighttime rating in the Texas Golden Triangle. That's Beaumont, Port Arthur, Orange, and Mid-Jefferson County. From 1959 to 1961 at KPAC, 1961 to 1964 at KOLE, from 1964 to 1965 at KAYC, from 1966 to 1967 at KLVI in Beaumont, where he shared a microphone with my dad, Joe Halstead. So you might be asking, why so many stations? While well, audience participation could have been the culprit, as Steve-O did like to have in-studio guests, and a few of them eventually became guest of note. Jimmy Johnson, coach of the Dallas Cowboys, and a would-be singer by the name of Janis Joplin. Today, most of his time is gladly spent with Benny, his wife of 54 years, their three daughters and their sons-in-laws, and we can't forget their seven grandchildren and one great-grandchild. Oh, it is a great life, and a good chunk of it because of his golden voice in the golden triangle during a golden era. Steve O'Donohoe is a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Hi everybody, my name is Steve O'Donohoe, alias Steve-O the Knight Rider, and it's my honor to accept this nomination into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Thanks for those who nominated me and voted for me. God bless you all. Hello there, I'm Josh Halstead, the owner and the operator of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Well, at least I'm going to be that for the next couple of minutes. Uh, many of you know this, many of you don't. We made the decision, my wife Kim and I, a few months ago to go ahead and turn the organization over to some new people, uh, some very capable people who have some wonderful ideas on how to grow this organization and make it even more of the organization that you believe it should be. Uh, behind the scenes, there have been a lot of us that have worked very, very hard to constantly update and upgrade and, and make uh, the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, the very special and worthwhile organization that I think it is. And I'd like to thank a handful of people, especially like Mike Shannon, who's not only a masterful historian, but uh, has been kind of a, a great advisor over the years and has followed this group since the very, very beginning. Also, my friend Chris Huff, uh, John Barger, who has always been there to offer legal advice, thank goodness, we never needed it. And even someone like Glenn Ivey, who, who was not a board member, did not serve uh, but certainly did serve the organization in a number of different ways. It was just always there to pick up the phone and say, is there something that I can do for you? We've had a great run 
uh, in the way that we run this organization. And as we turn it over to Doug Harris today, I hope that you will welcome him with open arms and that you also encourage him and, 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 and really, really push him to make the Texas Radio Hall of Fame what he envisions it to be, much like I did. You know, uh, I took the organization uh, over under some, some pretty stressful circumstances and it was a do or die for the group. But I always had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to run it and make it the way that I thought it needed to look, the way it needed to sound, and the way it needed to be run. And I realize sometimes uh, I, as a Halstead and an Irishman, have the, uh, the capability of rubbing people the wrong way. That certainly was never my intent with most of you. Uh, especially, again, to my wife, Kim, who uh, took over the books, always made sure the catering was really good and kept us financially solvent. And uh, to Chad Stevens, who has been uh, just a magnificent friend of mine and a super uh, partner in my syndicated work, and also the guy who behind the scenes uh, took this radio event and turned it into a far more optical spectacle. Thank you, Chad, for everything you did. And uh, finally, uh, to the uh, dues paying members of this organization, our lifetime members, and uh, those who are supportive uh, of our group in other ways, particularly uh, with the Texas Broadcast Museum in Kilgore. You know, it only costs a couple of dollars every year to uh, make sure that the doors stay open at that place, and it is so important that it does. At first glance, it seems that Greg Sachs has worked at more record labels than he did radio stations. And a glance at his broadcasting resume, that says a mouthful. And over the years, Greg worked with and for a handful of Hall of Famers himself. Like Kid Craddock at KEGL, Mike Wade at KLDD, Dan Halliburton at KPLX. And while he's not a Hall of Famer yet, programmer and personality John Q. Morris of Sirius XM Radio had the smarts to hire Greg twice, at his first real job in Bridgeport and again a few years later in Waco. It was 1995 when Greg made the move from radio to records and confidentially, he said it increased his monthly salary by about 300%. So who could say no? Atlantic Records took a chance and for the next 26 years, his country label career in record promotion has seen him work with some of the biggest artists in the country music genre. Like Alabama, Clint Black, Kenny Rogers, Ronnie Millsap, Ricky Skaggs, John Michael Montgomery, Tracy Lawrence, Martina McBride, Clay Walker, Neil McCoy, Sarah Evans, Tracy Bird, Trace Atkins, Joe Nichols, Chris Cagle, and Randy Hauser. And we can't forget those big record labels as well. Virgin Records, RCA, and Big Machine to name a few. Today he makes his home just outside of Fort Worth in the bustling city of Crescent with his wife Tammy and their two younger kids. And you bet he's still in the biz. Greg is a regional executive for Show Dog Nashville where his boss is Toby Keith. Who wouldn't want that gig? Oh, and this honor today. Greg Sachs is a 2020 inductee of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. I'm so blessed and honored to be inducted to the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Thank you, Josh Halstead and the board. I'm so amazed. That I didn't know you got a trophy with this. This is amazing. I'll never let my children hold this or see this, or in their entire life, they won't be able to have anything to do with this trophy. Thank you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for my family, for my beautiful wife, Tammy, for my sons, Ethan, Jordan, Dylan, and Tristan, for my dad and my mom, my mom who said she couldn't wait for me to be on the radio so she could turn me off. Trapper John, I'm not going to forget you. Trapper, thank you for this. We worked together at KNTU in Denton at the University of North Texas. And then you hired me for my first commercial radio job at KWCS in Bridgeport and at Waco 100. Two times you hired me. Waco 100. Zach Owen, you're going in the Hall of Fame. Zach, look. I got a trophy for you right here, Zach. Congratulations, Zach Owen. Also, K-Plex in Dallas. Dan Halliburton. Dan, 
Thank you for my trophy. K-Flex in Dallas. I loved working there with you, Dan. Also, the Eagle in Dallas. Hall of Famer Kid Craddock and Michael Blake and Joel Folger. Guys, do you remember when you gave me that trophy? It was so amazing. Thank you so much for my years there. I also am thankful for all those years in the record business. So many people to thank in the record business. So little time. I'll just say, Toby Keith, 15 years with you has been amazing. How do you like me now, guys? 15 years with Toby. Let's do 15 more, Toby. Thank you to TK Kimbrell and the staff. Thank you to Scott Borchetta for hiring me and Rick Moxley for inspiring me. Remember this, dream big dreams because dreams do come true. I'm a living example of that, y'all. Five reasons or five words. Texas Radio Hall of Fame, Greg Sachs. Thank you so much. I love you all.